Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Augie. I'm an investment partner with CMT Digital, and it's my pleasure to be here to moderate this panel titled Deepin Hype or the Next Trillion Dollar Market. Uh, maybe to start, it would be great if each of you can introduce yourselves and your project. And for those that are new to Deepin in the audience, how does a user or contributor get started on your network, and how long does it realistically take to see value? Uh, my name is Mike Horton. I'm the project creator of GeoNet. Uh, GeoNet is the decentralized location layer for robotics, and we provide a hyper-precise location signal. And what does hyper-precise location mean? So you can think of GPS as giving you kind of a rough idea of where you're at, sort of a couple meters in X, Y, and Z. We provide something that's 100 times more accurate. So it's pinpointing the location of a device to within roughly a cubic centimeter. And that is an incredibly high utility for things like drones and robotics. The network is powered by the community. So anyone can purchase a GeoNet station and set it up on a rooftop. You want to look at the map and kind of understand where there are gaps in the network, where there are open hexes, because the network is already the world's largest network, where 21,000 roughly nodes have been added to the network over the last uh, almost three years now, making it the broadest, most adopted network for hyper-precise location in the world today. Thank you for those introductions. Let's start with the level setting big picture question, which is when does decentralized physical infrastructure networks, i.e. deep in, when does it make sense and when does it not? I would just add, I think all digital infrastructure is better and more resilient when it's decentralized, but there may be an ordering problem that relates to how quickly a deep in network can generate demand. In our case, the problem that we've been solving has been a problem that's been around for 20 years and no one has ever been able to build a large scale high precision location network because it's inherently very decentralized. You have to have these nodes operating in all corners of the world. So our 20,000 nodes are probably the most geographically diverse and dispersed nodes in all of Deepin and the coordination that the tokenomics have provided had allowed us to bootstrap this in, in a time where the traditional networks in Web2 have been built up over 20 years and are roughly one-fourth the scale of GeoNet. And in two years, we've built something four times bigger. So I think it's a real testament that decentralization can really work. And as a result, we've been able to unlock demand very quickly and have scaled to about six million in ARR in just, uh, just under a year of, of working on the revenue side as the network has scaled. Now that we understand broadly where Deepin fits uh, and where it doesn't, the next question uh, is, how and, and whether these networks can sustain themselves economically, maybe touching on you know, the supply and demand issue that, that, that Mike alluded to earlier. I think each of your networks uses token incentives to bootstrap contributors, and it's, it's well understood that token incentives can help to jumpstart a network. But sustaining usage and long-term economics is obviously more difficult. Uh, I'm curious to get the updates for each of your projects. What's the clearest proof you have today that shows your network can sustain long-term growth with real unit economics, where supply and demand are naturally imbalanced? Maybe we start with Mike or Frank. Sure. So um, GeoNet has a token, GeoD, and that token has uh, started with a total supply of a billion tokens. And as the network is utilized, the number of tokens goes down through a permanent berm mechanism. So when any customer subscribes to our network to get precise location services, they're paying a fee um, which is used to buy back and burn GOD. And that rate of buy back and burn now is about 70%, and we expect it to exceed 100% um, sometime in early 2026. So I think we've established that you do need to use the token initially. You're not going to have that kind of buy back and burn power because you're building out the infrastructure but once the, once the infrastructure is there, if you have a good business case for the network, which we certainly do, our network is better coverage, a factor of 10 cheaper, um, fully modernized. So it really outperforms any of its Web2 peers in all aspects. It's able to drive that demand, buying back and burning the token, decreasing the total supply of geode all the time. Great. Uh, maybe second to last question before we wrap up, and I know we're just coming up on time here. Uh, I do want to spend just a minute talking about abstraction, because I think one of the other objectives uh, for the industry, and I imagine that's top of mind for many of you, uh, you founders, is you know, how do we make on the supply side the onboarding process more seamless? Uh, and then on the demand side, perhaps, how do we make it such that the user doesn't even know that they're using Deepin? Somewhat analogous, let's say, to DeFi applications that uh, abstract away 
the key management and the wallet setup process. Yeah. Um, I want to, for the interest of time, point this question at Mike, just because GeoNet, I think, has evolved in quite an interesting well way when it comes to abstraction from a more uh, heavily involved hardware interaction to something that's much more seamless. And so my question for you is, how do you think about abstraction for your product? And have you seen any measurable impact on churn or retention? Yeah, I think that um, traditionally setting up a what we call an RTK base station, which is the core of our network, has been something that really only large, huge web two companies and governments try to do. A node would run forty to fifty thousand dollars to set up, and ten thousand dollars per year of operating cost. We've simplified that down to a device you can buy for seven hundred dollars and run on your rooftop. But there are a lot of lessons along the way and how to get those installations to be the same quality that a traditional geodetic node has done. And we've done a lot of that through UI improvements, through a lot of improvements in the firmware, understanding the huge diversity of networks that are out there across the world, because we're deploying in essentially all the countries of the world except for uh, a few countries with unusual geospatial regulations such as China and Russia and denied countries. Um, and I think making it very simple has absolutely improved the not only the retention, but also just the performance, the SLA of the network. And the next thing that we did that I think has helped a lot is we started to combine multiple projects into one node. So rooftop space is inherently a very valuable asset. So if you own a rooftop, whether it's a home or a business, and you have stable power and stable internet, that's a valuable asset. And by putting multiple deep end projects together, like we've done in a node that we have that both provides coverage for GeoNet, but also provides coverage for WingBits, which is an aircraft tracking network, we're able for a single person to get a, a device up on the, on the roof and, and earn two different projects rewards. So I think that's another type of abstraction, this multi-project abstraction that's super useful. Makes sense. Great. Um, so we're coming up on time here. Uh, very last question, and I imagine the question that everyone in the audience has top of mind, which is, you know, very clearly after this invigorating discussion, Deepin is not just hype, but can it be the next trillion dollar market? And I'll sort of wrap things up here. For our panelists, if Deepin is to become a trillion dollar market, what's the specific consumer change uh, or technological unlock that will get us there, and how close are we today? I think it's super, super simple, actually. AI is the market. It's really the mega market. And within AI, there's physical AI. And the only way that physical AI can come to real fruition is through deepened networks that are providing the infrastructure for that. And physical AI is posed to 70% of the world GDP is real physical work. And that ultimately, over time, will be a quadrillion dollar marketplace. And deepened is the only way that that happens and it's going to be powering these 20 billion robots that are going to inhabit the earth and that is where the home run is. Well, great. That's a great note to add, end on. Thank you so much for the insights and the discussion and for those of you in the audience, thank you for joining us. Please join me in a big round of applause for our panelists. Geonet. Mind the sky.